Angel, watch Taylor Marshall and Father Charles Moore. Okay? They have a... He's going to tell us about about bad priests, bad bishop, and bad cardinals. Okay? Watch it, okay? Watch it. Wish we were dealing with problems like this rather than the nonsense that's going on today. Problems of, of, of priests losing their faith. This, this is true, it, and it's, it's, a, it's a real problem. And especially careerists who lose their faith. They lose their faith in exchange for a higher career. And this is, this is uh, it's horrible. And all of a sudden, these people, look at the, I mean, the irony is, 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 is horrific. These kinds of people are, are the superiors of people who believe in God. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you're ending up with in many cases, right? Not always, but in many cases. Let me say this too. In the Vatican, in my years working there, five years working there and, and, and nine years living in Rome, I met saints and sinners. I met some real saints working in the Vatican, seriously, devout, devout men who were committed to their work. It's like, it's like I, every time I gave a retreat to give a retreat to, especially to the Carmelite nuns or, or cloistered nuns, I always begin by saying there are two kinds of nuns that I've encountered. Saints, every convent has their saints and their saint makers. Yeah. <laughs> right. right. Well, you had that in the Vatican. You had saints and you had saint makers. Uh, anyway, Cardinal Gagnon was called in, commissioned by the Pope to begin this investigation. This was one big deal. Believe me, Rome talked about nothing else other than the Gagnon investigation. It's funny today, you mentioned people, they don't know what you're talking about, but it was, it went on for three years. Cardinal Gagnon or Archbishop Gagnon at the time talked to everybody who worked in the Vatican, everyone from top to bottom. And he came up with a lot of incredible conclusions after three years. Um, one of the major problems that he discovered immediately was in the Congregation for Bishops. Mm. Why is that important? Uh, again, for, for people who don't know exactly the, the, the structure of the church or how it works, bishops, bishops are pivotal to, to our Catholic faith. They are the successors of the apostles. Whether they're worthy or not worthy, that's not the point. They are the successors of the, of the apostles. We began with 12 apostles, one who wasn't, who wasn't worthy at all, okay? So they began with unworthy candidates also. But the man who creates those bishops is the most important man for many of us in the Catholic Church because at that time, during the 1970s, a number of things were happening. Paul VI had just put out a decree that every bishop had to resign or present his resignation at age 75. Now, again, let me explain to, 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 to the people who are listening what that means. Prior to that, a bishop was a bishop if he lived to be 107. He was the bishop of his diocese. He was not removed, he didn't resign, he didn't retire, unless, unless uh, 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 he was absolutely incapacitated. Only for that reason would, would his resignation be taken. Be, why? Because he was a church father. The bishop was the bishop. I mean, these were serious things, right? It's like a pope not resigning. It, it right. just wasn't done. Or because once you're in, you're in you're, that, that's it, right? Now, Pope Paul VI decided with this aggiornamento, this updating of everything, he bought into an awful lot of the philosophy of the world. And rather, than, rather than the church teaching the world, the church decided after the Second Vatican Council to learn from the world. This has been the major problem. 
This has been the major problem. We don't need to work to, to learn from the world. We know what the world is about. The, the world needs to learn, right? Well, Pope Paul VI decided to modernize the church in this sense that when a man got to be 75 years old, that was old enough, he should resign. Now, it was up to the Pope to whether to accept his resignation or not. He could go up to age 80, right? If, if the Pope wanted to keep him in there. What does this do? This meant that the majority of bishops were being changed. The entire episcopate was being remade in the 1970s. Uh, I don't have it in front of me, but I wish somebody would look it up. There was uh, an, uh, an article, an, an interview that Time Magazine gave to Nuncio, at that time it was called the Apostolic Delegate Jadot, uh, a Belgian, uh, uh, a, <laughs> amazing, Bel the only son of a Belgian um, diamond miner in, from Africa. The man was worth millions and millions of dollars. They made him uh, Nuncio to the United States or delegate, uh, Apostolic Delegate to the United States. He gave, when he resigned, when he left, he gave uh, an interview to Time Magazine, and his greatest achievement, according to him, was having left the United States with 70, it was either 75 or 78 new liberal bishops. He was very proud of this. Right? They were liberal bishops. Right? Well, that was the beginning of the end, thank you. That was the beginning of the end. All of a sudden, you, you have now these men who are CEOs, because many of them are, are more CEOs, you know, that than bishops. They're not worried about their flocks. They're working worried about other things, stocks and bonds, right? right. And, and, um, and finances. What they did was change the entire episcopate, not just in the United States, in the entire world. Right. And in the entire world, new liberal bishops were put in place. And this changed everything. Now, who was the man in charge of creating bishops? One man. His name was Sebastian Cardinal Baggio, B-A-G-G-I-O. Um, I call him the bag man. I, I, was in, I was in his presence, let me just tell you this, uh, uh, Taylor, I was in his presence one time in an elevator with him, up, going up to the congregation uh, for, for bishops, actually, to see somebody else, not him. He and I were the only people in the elevator going up. It might have been me, I'm sure it was. I felt freezing cold, and it was in July. There was just, there was, I, I, I couldn't wait to get out of the elevator. There was something, there was something, there was a wickedness. I was, gonna, I was going to say evil, but that maybe that's, no, I don't think that's too harsh a word. It's not too mm -hmm. harsh a word. Something evil about him, and you felt it. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the one in charge of making all of the bishops. Well, lo and behold, in 1975, Cardinal Gagnon, it comes to Cardinal Gagnon, the proof that Baggio, also belongs to Italian Freemasonry. Now, just so you've stop got, and think you've got what the I'm guy saying. writing the liturgy, Freemason. Now <laughs> you get you the know. guy. All the all the bishops of the world have to resign at seventy five, and now we've got the guy replacing everyone Freemasonic. Let me just get rid of. I'm sorry, phone sure. call. Yes, that's exactly it. Uh, as, as, as Stanley once said to, to Oliver, a fine kettle of fish, hmm. right? This is, this is where we're in. This yeah. is the situation we're in. It was a real mess. And of course, Baggio is naming liberal bishops to Japan, to, to, to France, to this. Everybody who held any idea of Catholic tradition, orthodoxy in that sense, was not a candidate. They, they were gone. New liberal, bop, 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 implement the changes of Vatican II. Now, you could ask a very good question. It is a very good question, and I'm sure you've asked it before. If Pope Paul VI knew 
who and what Bunini was and ousted him and sent him to Iraq to get rid of him. Why didn't he re-examine everything that Bunini had, had done? The new mass, the new sacraments, is it? I, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe he was afraid, maybe it would be admitting too much, maybe they were too advanced. I don't, I don't know, but he did not. He did not. So we're stuck with this. We're stuck with this. Gagnon found that, discovered this, and Gagnon went immediately with that discovery to the Holy Father. Right? Immediately. And, and said, there's something very wrong and very serious, and it has to be. He said, I haven't finished with the investigation, but I'm telling you right now, this has to be addressed yesterday. Good. Gagnon is still living at the Canadian College, and his rooms are all of a sudden ransacked. He's getting death threats, serious one, serious ones, at his office. And uh, it's also his office in San Calisto. You know the offices in San Calisto yeah. and next to uh, Santa Maria and Trastevere. There's a big Vatican office building in San Calisto uh, for the Committee for the Family, and he was also the president of the Committee of the Family. His offices were ransacked at night. They were broken into, looking for his, looking for his work. Right. So Gagnon gets in touch with Marini, with Mario Marini, and he, he tells this to Marini, and Marini says, well, why don't you come and live with us? So with Charlie and me, come and live with us, we're the only two pre He said, well, <laughs> he started laughing. He said, we do have someone else in the house who would ensure your safety to the utmost degree. He said, and that, he said, well, we just happened to get the Syrian Archbishop of Jerusalem as a permanent resident in the house. Who is the Syrian Archbishop of Jerusalem. His name is Hilarion Hilario Capucci. Who is he? He had just been released from Israeli prison. He was charged, tried, and convicted of smuggling arms to the Palestinian Liberation Organization while Archbishop of Jerusalem. He used his car that had diplomatic plates to transport arms to them. So the Israelis put him in jail and Syria, he was from Syria, Syria sent planes over, I believe it was every Thursday afternoon to drop bombs around the prison as protest that he was in prison, right? So finally the Israelis, you know, it sounds like I'm going all over the place with this, right? I'm sorry, right. but it's not an easy story to tell. The Israelis got sick and tired of this and they got into the house. So I came home from the Gregorian University one night and could not get into our house because there were protests outside. <laughs> I mean, hundreds, hundreds of people outside of our house. We lived in, in a little uh, uh, a back street that was always a quiet little place in a beautiful little neighborhood, right? Couldn't get through. The Italian police were there, Israeli agents, were there, Syrian agents from the Syrian government, from the embassy were there. And after the whole crowd dispersed the night he came, those three, the, at least two of those, uh, there was a van and a car, never left the area. Mm -hmm. The Israelis had a van there watching every, every move he made. And the Syrians had a van there watching every move the Israelis were making. So we lived in the safest, place, the safest house in all of Europe, in all of Europe. We had guards with machine guns standing outside the door, right? So Gagnon and Mario Marini said to Gagnon, you want safety? <laughs> Nobody can kill you in our house. <laughs> you can't even get in without being frisked. <laughs> so Gagnon moved in with us to, for, his own, for his own safety. It was great. And we, we lived together for, for two years and it was fantastic. He finished his study, and then uh, when he was finished, he asked me 
to drive him. I helped him. Uh, people, people think that I was his secretary and I know all of the dossier, everything. I don't. I don't. He was, a, he was very private. He was very professional about that. But he asked me at the end to help him file things because he had three different sections uh, uh, of, of the dossier that he had. It wasn't just one with three parts to help file. And then to, would I drive him to the audience he had with Pope Paul VI to hand in these documents, the result of his three year study of the Roman Curia. Now, so what he's going to do is tell the Pope, here are the people who are working for you. Right. These are the people you put in power. Uh, and, and, and that's it. So I, I said, absolutely. So I drove him. Uh, uh, he's got the file on his on his lap. We drove him uh, around the, the uh, uh, I can still see where we're going down the, down the Via Aurelia, the Aurelia Vaticana in the Mure. And we get down to, uh, uh, to the Holy Office. We go through, we get into port, we get into the uh, San Damaso. I park the car, Gagnon is in cassock, uh, uh, Zucchetta. Do you, do you know what Zucchetta means? The Zucchetto? Little, little pumpkin. Yeah, isn't that something? Yeah, a little pumpkin. <laughs> it looks like a little, it's got but a little it's, it's also, it. Yeah. yeah, but in Spanish it's called solideo. Oh, God alone. So, which means it comes off only for God. Right. Only at the, at the consecration, mm -hmm. right? Anyway, we're, we're up there. He's all in regalia and he's got his study and he goes up the elevator and I wait for him to come down. He's going to see Pope Paul and hand in this dust, this, this whole result of the investigation. And he's convinced that there's going to be sweeping changes in the Vatican. He's convinced of this. <laughs> I mean, so was I. If you're, if you're the one who's doing the, the investigation and you're an archbishop and you're convinced, who am I not to be convinced? He came down after an audience with the Pope. Desanimado, how do you say that? Discouraged, very discouraged. He got into the car. I said, well, what, what happened? He said, I handed everything to the Pope on his desk. I said, here are the results. Here's the results. Here are the documents. For, the, for this whole study, and here are my recommendations in a smaller, there were a thinner thing. The Pope pushed everything back to him. And he said- Is this Paul VI? The, 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 the Pope said to him, I, I, I can't deal with this. Leave it for my successor. You know, Gagnon is, Gagnon is a faithful Catholic and, and uh, a papist uh, to the bone, through and through. But he can just leave it for his successor. I mean, what kind of a thing is that? This It's taken me three years. Half the people I know no longer speak to me. <laughs> right. I mean, the divisions and everything else, I mean, just for asking questions. Well, to cut him a little bit of slack, this was when Aldo Moro was kidnapped and brutally murdered, tortured and murdered. And Aldo Moro was, was the prime minister of, of, of Italy, head of the Democristiana, the Democristia Cristiana, Cristiana, and a very close friend of Paul VI. They were close friends. Uh, his kidnapping, torture and murder really took a toll on Paul VI. Anyway, Gagnon is down in the car again with the dossier, with all of the, the documentation. And he's explaining this to me, and he's not happy. Let me just put it that way. Mm -hmm. We back home. Uh, and two months later, two and a half months later, the Pope is dead. Paul VI. August 6th, on, on August 6th, 1978. All right. I'm not going to bore you with the whole detail of the of the election. You know, there was an election. There were two candidates at that time. Gagnon told me, and Marini told me. This is before the the conclave. He said it, it's it's either going to be. He said, as much as I would like Benelli to be elected. He said Benelli has a lot of enemies. He said 
it's between Luchani and Waitiwa. I said, Waitiwa? What, what is a Waitiwa? <laughs> he's, oh, he's a, a Polish cardinal from, uh, from, from Krakow, a very good man, good friend of Benelli's. Bah, 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 bah. And I said, well, how do you know this? Said, because Benelli is going to propose them as candidates. First, Luciani, and if Luciani doesn't fly in the conclave, they don't vote for him, then the candidate will be Wojtyla. That's fine. Exactly th that happened. The problem was this, during the conclave, and I'll try to keep this brief, I know I'm going all over the place and I'm sorry for that, but during the conclave, there emerged various candidates. One of them was Cardinal Joseph Siri of Genoa. Uh, another one was- Who would have been Sebast considered very conservative. Sebast Sebastian Baggio. Oh, who, who by, the Freemason. Who by, by the way, Baggio presented himself as a conservative. Mm. He was very, he was very, very close to the Opus Dei. They, they, they had him at all of their celebrations and he was blessing everything and they loved it, loved very, yes, yes, oh yes, we have to do everything by the book. In the meantime, he's, he's destroying the church with the nominations he's, he's, he's sending out as new bishops, right? Anyway, th you've got three candidates, Siri of Genoa, Baggio, mm -hmm. and Benelli. Well, this is where, this, <laughs> Taylor, this is where we conservatives shoot ourselves in the foot, okay? Often we do this to ourselves. Siri saw that he couldn't win. There was, there was, a, there was a, they, they got, they got to a, they got to a place, but that was it. it couldn't you know what's win. funny? Couldn't I hear it on your phone, and I hear it on my phone. Every time you say Siri, my phone's trying to do iPhone oh, is Siri. That what it is? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm over here trying to figure out how to is turn that off. What it is? Turn it off. Isn't that funny? I heard it on my phone that I heard on yours. Never had that happen before. No. I'm like, what is going on? Wow, that's good. That's something. You live and you learn. You anyway, live and you learn. Okay, so Siri well, couldn't win. He he could not win. It was the only received. He received a, the the greatest amount of votes, but it stopped there. Nobody else was going over to his side. At the same time. So might I, I, might I get another votes. question? Do you believe Siri was, came close to, or was, did receive a ballot in 1958? There's a big conspiracy no. on that. You don't think so? No. Okay. No, and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why later, but, okay. but no, absolutely not. Uh, wishful thinking. Okay. And I, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it have been wonderful? Yes. Wouldn't it have been wonderful? Yes. It really would have been. And he was Pius XII's candidate. Exactly. And I'll, and I'll tell you why there wasn't okay. more made of that. But, but here's the thing, uh, you've got Siri of Genoa, <laughs> I can't believe this, and, I, and if you think I know how to turn this thing off, you've got another guest coming. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, just keep, roll, just keep saying Siri, I think I, my phone's figured out that we're just saying it over and over, doesn't care. That, good, the, the, the phones are, are tired of it, so it's good. Yeah. more intelligent than we are, and Benelli, is losing votes to Baggio, mm. head of the congregate for bishops. This is not good. No. Seeing this, seeing this, Benelli says, gentlemen, let me propose a candidate that I would give all of my votes to, and I think most of you would give your votes to Cardinal Luciani of Venice. Well, people looked around. He was president of the Italian uh, Episcopal Conference, uh, a well-educated man, a humble man, saintly man. People knew him. He won the election. That was done because you, this is why I said we, we, we conservatives and, uh, often shoot ourselves in the foot. Rather than give up his own votes he would have let a Freemason become Pope. <laughs> Rather than Siri, all, all Siri had yeah. to do was say, you know what, let me give some votes to Benelli. He wouldn't do that. Mm. So the only thing, the solution was Benelli, out of, out, of, out of his hat, pulled that rabbit. And it was agreed on, everyone agreed on, and he was a great candidate. 
and I believe he would have made a good pope. Right? Uh, came down to this. Every pope, John Paul II did not do this, and we'll keep that in our memory uh, to look at the, the problems that he himself caused himself by not doing this. Every pope, when a pope is elected, he decides his new government. Mm-hmm. Right? Like we do, like we do it. Uh, can you imagine Trump winning the election and, and ex- accepting Biden's uh, uh, <laughs> secretary of state? No, it's insane, right? Yeah. All right. Well, so the first thing that that the new pope, John Paul, he took the name John Paul for Pope, pope John the Twenty Third and Paul the Sixth. Good. Uh, the first thing that he did was he asked Benelli to be his secretary of state. Now, from Florence, Benelli is a cardinal form. That would have been a team. That would have been a team like you've never seen. Yeah. Right. Benelli said that he would. Now, you've got Villo. We still haven't talked about Villo. For the time being. Yeah. Villo handed in his resignation, oh. but it hasn't been accepted yet. Okay. Because Benelli put, Benelli put a caveat. He put a condition. He said, yes, as soon as you get rid of Baggio. Ah. As soon as you get rid of Baggio, get Baggio out of the, uh, out of the uh, uh, congregation for bishops. Get him out, and I'll come in. But you have to. And Pope John Paul the First said said to him, "Why don't you do it? <laughs> you you Baja was a, was a holy terror. Yeah. He was a strong man. It's no nonsense. He took no enemies. Right? And and Benelli said, "It's up to you. This has to be the first mark of your pontificate. You show business that way. You'll get respect." You know, it's, it's, there's an awful lot of of, 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 uh, of sort of mafia undertones in all of this, right? Yeah. You want to get respect. You want to be a man of yes. respect. Right? Yeah. So good. Well, how to get rid of Baju? What to do? I've, we've explained before that to eliminate, you promote in many of the Vatican circumstances. Well, they were going to promote Baju. How is this going to be done? Why are they such yellow oh, belly, pussy footing cowards? No, it's incredible. It's incredible. Yes, and it's incredible. So, but the Holy Father does this. He calls in Gagnon, and Benelli said, "Call in Gagnon immediately. Get that report." He said, "You'll see exactly who's who and what's what. Get the report." Again, I drove. <laughs> I drove Gagnon back to the Vatican. Again, he goes upstairs, hands in the report. The Pope studied that report very thoroughly. They say that he died with a copy of of, of the Imitation of Christ. Uh, Believe me, if anything, if anything, he died with some of the pages of of, uh, Cardinal Gagnon's proposed changes to the Curia. Right. Right. right, Anyway, uh, it's decided that the Pope decides what he would do is send Baggio to Venice. He's a cardinal, so you can't mistreat a cardinal. Send him to Venice, he's getting his due place. And in Venice, Luciani has auxiliary bishops and monsignors who run the curry and everything else. They could, they could take care of Baggio. He'd have him, he'd have him surrounded by the enemy right. and controlled, right? Uh, Pope Pius X did the same thing. He had two cardinals. He didn't. He didn't try. Angel, we have part two. Angel, okay. Angel, you gonna watch part two? Okay. So hold on. It's about bad priest, bad bishop, and bad cardinal. Okay.